So this is a video I basically abandoned a short time ago because I never really had the uh, right moment to finish it off, uh, which is ironic because it's basically a compilation of uh, videos I never finished or ideas that I've abandoned. So uh, yes, I guess that kind of uh, goes with the theme. But the reason I'm uploading it now is because the first episode of F122 my team is taking a very long time to record and edit and I just haven't had the, uh, haven't finished it off yet. So uh, today you are getting this one. I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. And uh, yeah, uh, I apologize that the editing of this one may be a little bit rough, uh, but uh, yeah, it's the best I've got for today. It's been a while since I've uploaded a video, so I just want to get one out. And uh, I felt like it was a good chance to uh, upload this one. So yeah, appreciate you watching and I'll see you soon. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now on the 28th of May 2022, this channel reached 100 subscribers and I didn't really have any plan uh, for a video to celebrate that, but I feel like we should uh, mark the occasion uh, in some way or another. So I've put together uh, a few random uh, clips and videos that I never uh, ended up posting either because I didn't think they were interesting enough or long enough uh, to be uh, a video of their own. But uh, right now uh, is uh, my own little celebration of uh, the occasion. I've built myself a dirt play button in my creative world and I'm just going to stick a sign on here uh, to mark the date. There we go, 100 subscribers on YouTube on the 28th of May, uh, 2022. Absolutely awesome a dirt play button with a gravel uh, symbol thing. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, I guess uh, it's a good time uh, to say thank you everyone so much for your support uh, and uh, to everyone who's been watching uh, recently. I think even since uh, we hit the 100 uh, about a month and a half ago now, uh, we have already uh, reached 110 and counting, so uh, that is awesome. So uh, thank you so much for all of your support uh, on the channel, to everyone who's uh, been watching, uh, because it uh, really does make a difference. So uh, yeah, thank you everyone. And uh, the rest of this video, like I mentioned, will be little bits and pieces, and we're going to start off with Gran Turismo Sport. And uh, I never actually made any videos on Gran Turismo Sport, but this is uh, one uh, funny little... Uh, clip I recorded. This, I believe, was one of the, the license tests, uh, and, uh, oh, I, what were they called? They weren't called license tests, were they? But anyway, dropped the wheel in the dirt on the uh, exit of the final corner there, slid across the line, and managed to get gold. Uh, I guess the, the licenses in Gran Turismo Sport uh, were very easy, to be fair, but I, I, I was very proud of that moment. <laughs> the most... Uh, Probably the most undeserved gold. I, I don't know if you if you did that with uh, your real uh, license instructor uh, watching on. Not sure if they would appro uh, approve of that one. But uh, anyway, there we go. We bin the car on the finish line and, uh, and get gold. But uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to something else. So here's a video I never really finished or barely got started to be honest. I had an idea to uh, try to win an online race uh, for a video or, or series, but uh, I gave, on, uh, gave up on that one pretty early on, uh, to be honest. Uh, decided that would be basically impossible, given that whenever I got uh, to a first corner uh, of a race, it would end something like this, even leaving a lot of space on the inside there. I still managed to get tangled up uh, by turn two, and uh, yeah. It would, uh, it just never went well for me in online races, so yeah, gave up on that idea relatively quickly. With that said, I did actually manage to finish second in that race with uh, more than half the field dropping out uh, by the end, but uh, that was as good as it got. The very next race was also at Monza, and uh, this time I actually managed to get a very good launch off the line after qualifying on the front row, but uh, once again, as we uh, head down towards the first corner, I went quite cautious on the brakes to not uh, make any contact with the car in front and we get hit from the car behind and uh, that seems to be a running theme honestly unfortunately that race ended with a very weird crash on the final lap getting too much power down on the curb just sends us straight across into the inside wall and uh, yeah out of the race the next race was in Azerbaijan where qualifying could only go badly without any practice that looked bad are you alright? let me know you're alright you would think with just six cars on the grid uh, in Azerbaijan, we would be able to have a clean start and have a decent race, but unfortunately we would only just barely make it past the first corner before this happened. Thankfully we were not out of the race, 
but uh, with damage to the car, uh, we were very limited in what we can do. And what's even more frustrating is uh, the uh, car we made contact with crashed on the very next corner. That race ended when turn 15 went horribly wrong. Are you okay? That was a big one. Confirm you're okay, please. A relatively boring wet race in Austria yielded the fourth place finish. Also, there is a helicopter flying around outside uh, in real life now. That is very unusual. Finally, we move on to China, where with a fairly decent start from third place on the grid and a field of just four cars, it was looking good as we head down towards the first corner. Even better, as the leading pair collide and we are able to get through and into the race lead as uh, the two of them are recovering. And uh, with a decent buffer out of turn two, uh, this will be our best chance of uh, converting into a race victory. However, by the end of the first lap, we had the pressure on already uh, from one very quick customer right behind us. At this point, with them gaining a straight line, I decided the best course of action would be just to give them the inside line into the first corner when we'll try to hold on uh, around the outside. Uh, they made a bit of contact with us and sent themselves into a spin, uh, giving us a clear shot at the race win. Unfortunately though, uh, they were not the only quick customer in this race, and while we held the lead, uh, we were under serious pressure once again come the end of lap 4. Defending to the inside would do absolutely nothing for us, and uh, they were able to blow straight past. So on to the final lap, uh, it was all about defending for, for uh, second position. P2 is still a good result for me, and we're going to try a switch back here to get back up the inside uh, through turns 1 and 2. And it actually worked absolutely perfectly for us, and we've retaken second position, giving a bit of space on the inside. I wasn't quite sure uh, where they were, but uh, we're actually clear, and uh, we are through into P2. Uh, once again. Now, as we head down uh, into turn six, uh, we are uh, under serious pressure once again as they are uh, massively closing the gap in the braking zone there. But uh, once again, we're going to hold on. Defending a little bit into uh, the high speed corners here sends us a bit wider than we would have liked to have been, but uh, nonetheless, we're able to uh, hold on to the position. Very difficult to overtake through there, even if uh, the car in front does make a mistake. And uh, now, on to the uh, last sector. We are actually going to let them go here to try and get the DRS and uh, we'll try and re-overtake them. They take the shortcut and uh, we both make an absolute meal of that corner and uh, we will uh, just not worry about that too much um, and uh, we'll uh, retake second position. I don't really know uh, where they've gone in all this but uh, yeah we're, we've got a big gap to them now so uh, we should have a second position in the bag. Not sure what went on back there to be completely honest but uh, anyway we now uh, head down towards the hairpin uh, for the final time and uh, just two corners to go uh, in this race. Oh wait here they come we pause the game to try and uh, ghost the car and hope that uh, they don't make contact with us. Uh, we do go wide but uh, we're able to get away with it and we're still in the race. They've sent themselves out so I don't know what on earth they were trying to do there. I mean, I, I know what they were trying to do, but I don't know why. But nonetheless, we're going to bring home P2. But uh, that was a bit of a weird one. So, uh, yeah, I don't, not, I don't even know what to say about uh, the end of that. But it's another P2, but uh, it's still not a race win. And I think at this point is uh, when I gave up on uh, the idea of winning an online race. And, uh, yeah after seeing the how, how, how much faster everyone else was uh, and how good of an opportunity we had, uh, it just wasn't going to happen. So, yeah, that was, that's unfortunate. That, uh, that uh, probably won't happen, but we'll see. Maybe one day I'll get lucky and, and win an online race somehow. But, uh, yeah, let's move on to something else. Here's a video I never uploaded about collecting 1 million cobblestone in Minecraft. Hello everyone and welcome back to Minecraft. Now I'm sure we can all agree 1 million is a very big number and you might be looking at this big pyramid in front of me thinking, is that 1 million cobblestone? No, it's not even close. This massive pyramid that goes all the way up to the old world height uh, is not actually 1 million cobblestone. It doesn't even reach 150,000. So to see 1 million cobblestone, uh, we are going to need to see it in storage because seeing it uh, in a physical Minecraft world is uh, very near impossible. But don't worry if you do want to see 1 million cobblestone blocks placed in a world because we will tackle that one at the end of the video. So now we venture into the cobblestone storeroom under the house and uh, you can see there are many many chests here. This 
is uh, an 11 by 11 area as well as uh, an extra few chests uh, just there um, and all of these are full of cobblestone every single one of them is full and uh, this is uh, 127 large chests uh, or the equivalent of uh, you can see there's a few single chests but we're just counting those as half a large chest uh, but uh, even that's not enough uh, a large chest contains 3456 uh, blocks of cobblestone uh, when it's completely full but uh, that uh, brings us to 438,912 uh, cobblestone in total uh, which is still not enough uh, so we are going to need more as you can see these chests uh, on the left there don't actually have cobblestone they, the one has chiseled stone one just has some other uh, slabs walls etc but uh, not actual cobblestone blocks so they do not count uh, we are only counting full complete blocks of cobblestone here so uh, we're going to need to go and find some more space to store uh, all of our cobblestone and uh, to do that we're going to go outside and back to where we started the video at this thing the great cobblestone tower uh, that stretches all the way from where we are uh, we're down at level 64 at the moment uh, and you can see there's even a barrel uh, just in the water there but uh, yeah we're down at level 64 and uh, this uh, tower goes all the way up uh, from ground level uh, to the old build height uh, of 256 and you can see this side of the tower is all barrels and every single one of them uh, is full of cobblestone uh, so each barrel can contain 1728 uh, blocks of cobblestone uh, which is half uh, of a double chest a large chest so uh, that brings us to a total of 331,776 cobblestone uh, in storage there but uh, not even that brings us over the 1 million uh, blocks uh, that we are trying to achieve here that only brings us up to 770,688 cobblestone so we're going to go back down to the ground now and uh, we will uh, find another place to uh, store cobblestone and in fact we did that right next door in this uh, chain of chests and hoppers here this uh, is almost full of cobblestone we stopped it at a very uh, specific number but uh, we'll go down to the bottom and uh, well bedrocks had a, a bit of an issue here the uh, this is meant to be a, a double chest at the bottom but somehow it's sort of rendered them into two separate chests they were connected a few minutes ago but anyway um, when I open the left one the one on the right opens as well which is another strange thing but anyway this is meant to be a double chest full of cobblestone I don't know if it still is but we'll just pretend it is for uh, the sake of this thank you bedrock edition for doing your thing but uh, each level of this uh, chain of chests and hoppers is uh, a double chest uh, and a hopper uh, so that is basically a double chest uh, plus five stacks uh, if you will so that is a total of 3776 uh, cobblestone uh, that uh, a chest and hopper together can store uh, which by pure coincidence means the chest uh, on the very surface of the ground uh, will be the one uh, that will get us across the line uh, to 1 million cobblestone uh, when we fill it up with 43 stacks of cobblestone exactly which you can see we have done here and this is definitely not a couple of days later after realizing I did the maths wrong initially also this chest at the bottom has fixed itself now too so that's great but back to the surface when you take 1 million cobblestone out of the world that's got to leave an impact we haven't used any cobblestone generators or anything like that uh, we obtained all of this uh, naturally uh, mining uh, real blocks out of the real minecraft world and this is where the majority of the cobblestone came from uh, this uh, massive pyramid project uh, all the ground inside here has been flattened down uh, to level 63 uh, there weren't too many mountains there were a few but uh, yeah, this is where a lot of the cobblestone came from. And uh, you can see this is a huge area. This, Like I said uh, at the start, this pyramid is uh, 385 blocks uh, on each side. Uh, 192 blocks high. 193 uh, high. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a huge area. Uh, and uh, this whole inside, uh, all the mountains uh, that were here, the hills, all flattened down. Uh, which adds up to a lot of cobblestone. But it's not the only place we've got large amounts of cobblestone from either. Uh, we also have uh, this uh, mining uh, area. We've got tunnels going all over the place as well as this uh, uh, sort of entry main room, uh, which is quite big. 
Uh, and then uh, we have the most recent uh, of our major projects, uh, which is this. <laughs> uh, a great big hole in the ground full of wool of all the different colours. Not sure what purpose, purpose it serves, but it looks cool and uh, it exists. So uh, this also helped us gain uh, many, many stacks uh, of cobblestone. Uh, and right next door, uh, there's actually another one. Uh, just uh, next to this one. This one has water uh, flowing down the sides. This one was more recent. You can actually still see the beacon uh, there. And uh, yeah, these two uh, were the last uh, two major uh, projects uh, that uh, we've been working on. And uh, we've got uh, lots of cobblestone digging out all this area. And uh, that is how we got to one million cobblestone. Of course, there's other things, uh, more other tunnels, uh, that we've dug more uh, land area that we've leveled out and so on but uh, these are the major places we've got cobblestone from and uh, that gives you an idea of uh, what it would take to get one million cobblestone but uh, I promised at the start of the video uh, to uh, show what one million cobblestone actually placed down in a Minecraft world looks like so uh, let's go and do that and to do this we are going to be making use of the fill command uh, which before this I had never used before so it took a bit of trial and error to figure it out but uh, as it turns out you can't really place too many blocks at once so to uh, get to 1 million blocks this way is uh, actually going to take quite a while still uh, this is uh, what I think 30,000 blocks and uh, you can see it's a lot but it's not a million so we're going to need to speed this up <laughs> And so here we are, 15 minutes later, or probably about 15 seconds for you, and we've done it. One million cobblestone in a gigantic cube in a Minecraft world. That is solid. That's not hollow. Um, but the, yeah, we go. There we go. One million cobblestone. That is what it looks like. A hundred by a hundred by a hundred cube. And uh, we're going to have get, get an elytra here so we can have a better look. But... Uh, <laughs> I love the look of this thing, it's just insane, uh, the way this looks, but uh, yeah, there's, there's almost no sense of scale, uh, because it is all just one uh, texture, so uh, actually what we're going to do, we'll put a tree here, uh, just a standard oak tree, everyone knows how big oak trees are, and uh, we'll have a little fly around with, uh, with an oak tree on the top, and uh, now you can get a sense of uh, how massive this cube is. This is, this is just ridiculous, but uh, there we go, uh, that is uh, going to bring this video to an end. Continuing with more Minecraft, uh, here is a floating end rod I found uh, in a castle uh, the other day, and it reminded me of something terrible that happened to this castle uh, a long time ago, and likely the reason uh, this end rod uh, here is floating, uh, so uh, let's get into that. So the castle is the Osaka Castle, and I built it from a tutorial uh, by Cortez Arino. I'll leave a link to the tutorial uh, in the description. But one time while entering the castle, uh, there was no floor. And uh, in fact, many wooden parts of the castle uh, were completely missing. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, was not fun. Uh, and basically what happened was, uh, I don't exactly know what started it, uh, but uh, somehow a massive fire broke out in this castle, and uh, yeah, we have lost the the majority of the wood uh, in the castle. Uh, it's all completely burnt. You can see all the junk blocks that uh, are used just to fill in the spaces you can't see. There's dirt and pumpkins and melons everywhere. Um, the... The pumpkins are, uh, well they're actually jack-o'-lanterns uh, for lighting, uh, but they would usually be hidden by carpet. We've got glowstone under the stairs as well that you shouldn't normally be able to see. There's stone and other junk blocks sitting around everywhere. This place is just a mess and uh, also uh, uh, a great place for mobs to spawn as I found out uh, yeah, pretty soon after this. But yeah, it's, uh, this was not fun. 
uh, in total. I lost, I don't even know, I think like 20 stacks of wood, if I remember correctly. This was uh, quite a long time ago now. Uh, and I did end up fixing the castle um, and, uh, and restoring it, uh, putting all the floors and walls back in. Uh, and I guess I'll uh, show that in a moment. But uh, yeah, it is, uh, <laughs> it's a mess um, right now. It's just... It's it's hard to even to navigate this place because it's just completely just burnt. There's there's barely any floor left. Thankfully, pumpkins and melons don't actually burn, uh, so we can still use the those uh, uh, to walk around. Uh, but here is the top, and uh, yeah, barely anything left of uh, the top floor. Just a, fl a few blocks uh, around uh, this central point where our uh, Ender Dragon egg uh, is. Um, but yeah, this place is just wrecked. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was a, a big disaster. Probably the worst thing that's happened, uh, in our Minecraft world because, uh, even though I followed a tutorial to build this, a lot of work, uh, went into it because this thing is massive. There's, there was meant to be all coal blocks along here where I'm looking now between these gold blocks that you can see, they've all burnt up. Uh, thankfully coal's not a problem for us, but... Yeah, that was that was uh, quite something uh, when it happened, and the only reasonable way I can imagine a fire started uh, here is uh, because of a lightning strike. And uh, I don't think I've ever had uh, a building catch fire from a lightning strike. I don't recall that ever happening in a Minecraft world before, and I've been playing Minecraft since... 2011 2012 something like that and I've never had that happen and uh, well what a way for that to happen for the first time I didn't actually see any of this on fire uh, which is a strange thing but I, given that it's all the wood ha has gone it, it's got to be fire but yeah that is uh, definitely something crazy um, and what's even crazier is I actually had my collection of music discs uh, in this building and uh, one of the very few places uh, that have uh, not been burnt by the fire uh, was the room with the music discs in it. So that was uh, incredibly lucky. I don't know if barrels burn, but uh, I'd rather not find out the hard way uh, with my music disc collection uh, just over there. You might have briefly been able to see it there. But yeah, that is uh, what a destroyed castle looks like. Now let's get it all fixed up. So here is the first step of uh, the restoration. You can still see the carpets and the walls are uh, all still a mess, but uh, I've completely uh, filled in the first uh, floor once again so we can actually walk around safely and uh, and have a look around at the damage. Uh, you, you can see a uh, lots of acacia wood has gone missing, all those pillars and, and uh, logs lying on their sides uh, around this place all made of acacia. Uh, which is very annoying. Here is my music disc collection that I was talking about and uh, pig step as well uh, there but uh, thankfully this room remained mostly intact. Uh, you can see a bit of carpet had gone missing from uh, the uh, from the, the mat there but uh, yeah thankfully uh, this room uh, at least this this edge of this room uh, was mostly okay. Uh, literally around about two blocks around the music discs um, uh, managed to survive okay. You can see all the floating end rods as well uh, around the place. Goodness me, that scared me now thinking it was a creeper. No, it's just thunder. Um, but yeah, at the time I'm sure that gave me a jump. But uh, yeah, uh, let's just move on to uh, when this is completely repaired. And so here we are, uh, quite a while later, but uh, it is done. Everything is all back to uh, how it was. Uh, if we take a look uh, down here at the kind of basement uh, level, uh, you can see all the ceiling is back, uh, which was uh, all gone before as we kept uh, falling through the floor. And uh, yeah, all the pillars holding up uh, the ceiling are uh, all back is in place as well. The top half of those uh, were all burnt up. Um, but yeah, as we head back up into uh, the uh, higher levels, uh, all the floors, the walls, everything's all nice looking again. And uh, I've actually uh, upgraded the carpets uh, as well. I've got some glazed terracotta uh, in uh, all the different carpets and uh, mixed in some uh, more different colors as well. 
So yeah, uh, it's uh, probably better than it was, uh, to be honest. But yeah, it's still... Uh, it was very disappointing when that happened, uh, losing uh, that much uh, progress and, and that much wood. Uh, it's just ridiculous. You, you, don't have, you have no idea how much wood is in this uh, until you actually try to, to build it. But uh, there we go. Uh, here is the uh, the party room with uh, the crazy uh, blue terracotta on the glazed terracotta uh, on the floor. And uh, uh, at the time I uh, built this, I had to place the lanterns under these little tables because uh, on the bedrock edition, um, you uh, you couldn't uh, place lanterns on top of trapdoors. But uh, as I uh, have since found out, they've uh, updated that, uh, and now uh, that is something. Uh, you can now do so that's what I'm uh, testing out here uh, to see if that is now uh, something we can do and uh, yeah thankfully it is and they finally uh, implemented that it was uh, it was not in the game for a long time but uh, now if we uh, yeah just move that trapdoor down uh, by uh, a small amount we can place the, uh, the, the, the lantern on top and uh, now I just have to uh, move this one as well but yeah it was. It's uh, cool to uh, finally have that. It's a, it seems like a small detail, but uh, that changes uh, quite a few things. On the next level up in the castle, uh, we ha did have these armor stands with uh, all the different mob heads on them. Uh, we had one for creeper, which you just saw, uh, one for with a skeleton, uh, as well as one for zombie and one for skeleton, uh, as well. And uh, unfortunately, we lost all of those, uh, which was uh, another. Very, very uh, valuable thing that was uh, in this castle that we uh, lost in the fire. Uh, all those armor stands with uh, the mob heads, but uh, thankfully we've been able to uh, replace all those. We have a, a crazy creeper farm that does mob heads and music discs and all sorts uh, as well. Um, all music discs, obviously, a bar, bar pig step because uh, you only really get that from bastions. Uh, fun fact about that uh, music disc, actually, uh, we only had one copy of it, and uh, we managed to accidentally duplicate it um, with... Uh, I didn't, actually, when did that happen? I, um, when we transferred the world from uh, the old Xbox to the new Xbox, I think. Um, we, we somehow duplicated that. Uh, as well as the full set of netherite armor, which is cool. But anyway, you can see the carpets in this area are uh, a mix of uh, crimson and warp stems uh, in a kind of crossover checkered uh, pattern, uh, which is cool. And uh, yeah, maybe not quite in theme with the castle. Uh, a bit mysterious looking, I suppose, but anyway. We move on to the top of the castle. You can see all this is all fixed up as well. And uh, we've got a spore blossom hanging up there with some dragon heads, dragon egg. And uh, yeah, this is basically... Where we push, we just put all our expensive stuff here, basically all the rare things in Minecraft: music discs, dragon egg, dragon heads, mob heads in general. We've just thrown it all in here. Um, so hopefully we don't get another fire. Otherwise, that will be big sad. Moral of the story: use lightning rods. I actually had an idea. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to follow through with it or not, but uh, I wanted to to build something from uh, every country in the world uh, or at least all the major countries um, yeah I'm not sure if it's going to happen because there's a lot of countries and there are obviously particular countries where it would be difficult to find uh, something you know, to build in Minecraft uh, from but we'll see how it goes I'm, I might get uh, some way into that if you want to see more of this world I could do a sort of tour of it at some point uh, if that's something uh, people are interested in but uh, yeah, that's enough of uh, this for now. Hello, spider friend uh, back there. I think he's going to uh, come for a visit in a minute. So uh, we'll move on to something else. Here's where we get into some silly stuff. So back in F1 2020, I found a glitch where you could get the photo camera outside of the map. Uh, and I got a bunch of random screenshots and video clips from that. Like this picture of the giant Ferrari pair of underpants at the old Turn 7 in Abu Dhabi. Or Yuki Sonoda's Formula 2 car crashing into a boat. Or the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache viewed from above. If you look carefully at this one, you'll see a car behind the grandstands. Here we can see Daniel Ricciardo driving on water. If you haven't worked it out by now, the same glitch also teleported cars into random places. Here is the Shanghai circuit in China from above. And if you want to know how to activate this glitch, it's worth noting that it only works in F1 2020. It doesn't work in F1 2021. I don't know about uh, previous games before that. 
But uh, anyway, drive around to the opposite side of the circuit, uh, to the pit lane, and then use the pause menu to return to the garage. Then drive out of the garage manually, and as soon as you get control of the car, use a flashback, and uh, flashback to the earliest point you can, and just repeat that last step over and over and over. Uh, and you'll notice, uh, as you do it, the car will start uh, appearing in weird places on the replay camera, and uh, then you can enter photo mode from there, and uh, that is how you get out of the map. In this case, you can see I only had to flashback once, but sometimes you need to do it multiple times, and you can also see the car is uh, underground. And given that this glitch allows you to fly infinitely high with the uh, photo camera, you can uh, have a look at the Monza track from above and see uh, the full oval as well. So in my explorations of various tracks, I found these people floating around, and there is an Alpha Tauri trying to be a helicopter. I've also never noticed it says Melbourne on top of the Melbourne pit buildings. Also, the sky occasionally does this when you go out of the map too far. Do you have any idea what I'm looking at right now? We're about to find out. Yep, it's a big screen. That was actually oddly satisfying. <laughs> this guy's gonna need a little bit more than a shovel. These people need to learn how car parks work. There's some kind of UFO flying around here. And this guy's got himself bogged in solid ground. Here is the Suzuka circuit from above. I think I found out why Alfa Romeo was so slow in 2020. They've got Monaco on the computer screen, but we are clearly at Suzuka. Here there's an F1 car in the car park. This Alfa Tauri has ended up in the Racing Point garage. Here's a bird's eye view of the Abu Dhabi circuit. Now we have an F2 car on a boat. And that is going to do it for this one. Uh, I think this video has gone on long enough. Uh, while I'm here, I guess I might as well show off this giant bell um, that we built. This is made from solid gold, and uh, that unusual building beneath it is uh, where we have all of our villages. It's designed to be, uh, I guess, like a bunker slash fort, so we can stand at the top or uh, like just behind those uh, iron bars and uh, shoot arrows at the pillagers when we do raids. Uh, but we don't really use it for that anymore because we have a, a raid farm now. Um, but yeah, that was the original design. It's an unusual design. Uh, made from all the kind of mineral blocks, you know, iron blocks, gold blocks, lapis, all of that. Uh, very expensive, but interesting, we'll say. Um, but yeah, um, there's lots of other stuff in this world, but I think I have to uh, stop myself here, otherwise this video will go on forever. We've got some map art, by the way. We've got the map of Australia there and uh, the Holden logo. Uh, but anyway, that's for another time. Uh, so yeah, for now I will just say thank you so much for watching uh, all the way to the end. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to give me some feedback uh, in the comments uh, and let me know any uh, questions or other stuff you might have in your head at this particular moment. Why is there a torch on one side and not the other? Okay, well I'll have to fix that at some point. But anyway, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Really do appreciate it. Feel free to give me some feedback in the comments and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.